Hey guys, this is Rani with a brand new tutorial about Canva and today is a very big one. Indeed, yesterday Canva officially launched Canva 2.0, the updated version of Canva. About 10 days ago, Canva reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to become a better user for Canva 2.0. Of course, I said yes and I had about 10 days to play around with the new platform. So I have decided because there's so much new stuff going on to create not just one, but two videos to show you everything that's new in Canva 2.0. This is the first video and in this one, we will focus about user interface and user experience. Then there will be another video that explains all the new features. Are you ready? Look at this dude. In this lecture, we are going to go over all the differences in Canva 2.0 in terms of user interface and user experience. So how does the new version of Canva affect the way you are working, affect the way you are using the platform to create your visuals? And I'm guessing right now, the very first thing that comes to your mind, if you don't have Canva 2.0 yet, uh, is how can I access this new version of Canva, this updated version of Canva? So. Um, from being in contact with Canva and knowing how they will start releasing this new version, uh, what they have told me is that they will start rolling it out uh, progressively to all their user base. So if you don't have access to Canva 2.0 yet, it might be for one of these two reasons. Number one, uh, it hasn't rolled out to you yet, which is just a question of days, maybe weeks, but it will eventually roll out to everybody. Uh, and the second reason why you might not have access to Canva 2.0 yet is that because you simply need to log out of your account and uh, sign out of your account and sign back in to have a refreshed um, access to Canva 2.0. So uh, I suggest you try this, just try to signing out and then signing back in. And then if you see the explore Canva 2.0 uh, button right here, that's the way to access Canva 2.0. You have to click on this to actually be using it because they are giving uh, both versions to the users right now. They are allowing users to still use the, the previous version of Canva, but to test out the new version of Canva 2.0. I'm telling you this to start this lecture with because I've seen a lot of people asking on social media and on YouTube, how do I access Canva 2.0? And this is the answer. Canva is going to roll this feature out, this update out to all its user base progressively. So now that we have cleared that, what are the differences between this new version and the previous one? Well, the first one is obviously what we've seen in the previous lecture, that this big search bar is now uh, prominent in the dashboard. So Canva wants you to use search terms to start your design, to start your project. So we have already covered this in the previous lecture, but still, this is very important. So now, instead of searching through a variety of different designs and different Canva sizes, you just have to type in whatever you are looking for in this search bar. Let's say you want to have access to an Instagram story, just type Instagram story, and then you have the exact Canva that you need to um, design already created for you. And then as usual, Canva will have a bunch of different templates for you to choose from and to work with. So this is the main difference that, uh, at least for the Canva dashboard, that you need to start your designs, your project with search terms. Second, uh, Canva is now accessible in a bunch of different languages. So if you read the Canva blogs and all the news that they have, they are mentioning that uh, they now provide access to Canva to more than 1 billion people in their native language. So that's pretty amazing. And uh, in order to change your Canva language setting, you just have to go to your um, Canva account um, settings right here. So the, I clicked on the little arrow next to my name and then go to account settings. And then from here, uh, you can go and change your language. See this language. Uh, drop down list has now become very, very big. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, you can have Canva access to Canva in the language of your choice. Next, I want to show you a neat little feature that Canva added to its new version. And I'm talking about the possibility to collapse the side panel. So this is the side panel. So all this area here, 
and you see now there is this little arrow that says hide or you can even use a shortcut which is control plus the the slash uh, the slash key so let's try this just click on this and you see it collapses the side panel so now i have more space to work on my design so this is quite neat i can use this extra space to really see what i'm doing here if i zoom in i have a nice big working area so it's nice if you want to bring the side panel back in let me zoom out really quick it's very easy you just have to click anywhere in this area either on one of these tabs or in the empty area right here and the side panels comes back in if you want to try the keyboard shortcut control slash and then as you can see it collapses and brings back the side panel so this is a neat little upgrade gives you more comfort to design more space to see what's going on Another cool new feature in Canva 2.0 uh, has to do with the text box. Now, if you use the text tab right here, the text button, you, you see a different um, kind of layout. Before you had three different choices in terms of text sizes, in the, you had like the main title, the subtitle and the body text. You could choose one of these, but now you just have add a text box as a button and then a bunch of different uh, templates or text combinations that you could use and this is quite nice you already had this in the previous version but I think they, they added some new designs some new text combos uh, if you want so let's try this add a text box button okay so you can see it adds a text box in the middle of your design let me zoom out to show you this is the exactly the middle of my design and um, this is the default uh, font that, that they are using but what I want to show you is that now, if you want to change the font, it looks very similar to what we had before, but if you look closely, you'll see a major, two major differences. The first one is the possibility to search for fonts. And this is a major time saver. You don't have to scroll down the font list anymore. You can just use the search option to find, for example, um, let's say I want to use Montserrat. Okay, so you just type Montserrat and then Canva will suggest all the Montserrat uh, fonts that they have into that list. So that's pretty neat and that's very useful. I'm going to use this all the time. Again, if you want to search for, uh, let's say, Bebas Noe, you simply start typing the name of the font. So that's the first major improvement and that's very, very useful. It will save a lot of time. The second new feature related to text uh, is for Canva for work users, so the paid version of Canva, right? And this is the possibility to upload your own font. Before, to upload your font, you had to go uh, into the main Canva dashboard, into your, your brand kit, and then from there you would upload a font. Now you can simply upload your font from here directly. It will bring you back to this section of your branding, but uh, you can upload the font without having to leave your design, which is pretty cool. So that's the two new features related to text. Something else I want to show you, which is new in Canva 2.0, is that they rearranged this uh, side panel right here. So let me show you. Before, when you used to click on element, you had a bunch of different icons showing you the different element categories. Now, these, they got rid of these icons and they rearranged the, the menu like this. So they give you a preview. So for free photos, grid, shapes, etc. So basically they kept the same element categories, but they present them differently. For example, right here, the free photos, they show you two photos. And if you want to see all of them, you just click on the all button right here. It will bring you to uh, the category of all the free photos. Same with the shapes, which is something I used regularly shapes. So if you want to see all the shapes, just click on all and then you'll get there, which is quite like the same thing as before you would click on the shape icon and you will get to this menu so basically what canva is trying to do with this new version is give you more flexibility when you're working it's more keyword oriented and it's more like it's been improved to make you save some time so now you can see previews of everything it's really fast you see, okay, I need a frame, this is the one. I need a Canva related branding stuff, this is the one. And then you can click on all and come back. Also, I think in this new version of the app, Canva uh, wants you to close panels. So if you click on, for example, the Canva related branding elements, 
if you want to get back to your main menu, you have to close this panel by using uh, the X button. So this is one of the major change, I would say, uh, between Canva 2.0 and the older version of Canva is this, the way the elements are presented right here. Basically, fundamentally, it's not very different. It's just that they want to present them to you in a different way. So that's um, one of the big differences. Also, uh, those of you who are regular users of Canva would notice that one of the tabs right here has disappeared, and that is the background tab, the tab that allowed you to change the color of the background of your design. But that doesn't mean this functionality doesn't exist anymore. You can still achieve the same result in two different ways. So one of the first way is just simply to go to the color um, to the color options right here, just by clicking on the on one element and then click on the color. And then you will see different colors. Just by clicking there, you will be changing the background. So no need now to go to background tab and then change it from there. You can change it directly from the color options right here. So the second method to change the color of your background is by using the shapes, right? So you go to elements and then you scroll down for shapes right here and you insert a square shape or rectangle shape, doesn't really matter, but you will have to cover the whole screen and then change the color of this shape for yellow, for example, and then you can push it back and like this, you change the color of your background by adding another layer that has a different color. So these are basically the two different options for you to change the color of your background without having to rely on a background button like before. Okay, I want to show you something else that kind of changes the way we use Canva in terms of user experience and workflow um, is the way that they present their elements right here. So you can see this is basically a placeholder with a photo inside so I can change this let me show you by uploading something else I want to upload my photo let's do this okay so I changed it so this is um, a frame and you can place something inside that frame but what's new is these handles right here you can now crop your elements very easily by using the handles so this is very convenient because before you had to double click on your image and zoom in and it was more difficult to really achieve or frame uh, exactly what you, what you want to use in your design. Now you can use these handles to basically resize any element, I mean any graphical element. I don't think, yeah, it also works with text but in a different way. It doesn't cut your text, it just resizes the box. So it's very useful for photos and graphic elements because now you can shape uh, basically a visual in, with more precision. So this is very useful. These are the handles. Something else I want to show you related to your photos is that Canva changed the filters and the name of all the filters they have for your photos. So you can go none like this. They still have two options for black and white, but the name changed. It used to be called grayscale and street. Now it's called carbon and ash fall. So basically new filters, I'm not sure yet if there are new filters or just new names for the existing filters, but it seems like they uh, implemented some new filters. So um, you can play around with these, discover them and find out which one is your favorite filter, but there are new filters in Canva 2.0. Uh, another thing I want to show you is still related to photos when you click on the adjust button before uh, you had the filters and then underneath this you would have like advanced options. Now they separated this into two different things and now you have adjust and the adjust button allows you to play with the same settings basically as before brightness, contrast, saturation, tint, blur and the X process but it's just under a different tab, which is called adjust. You still have the filter code, which is very useful if you want to reproduce exactly the same effect on all your photos. Now we have the crop options, which are similar to before. You can zoom in and out. You can move your design to the left, to the right. So this is quite similar, nothing new here. And the flip also, same thing as before, nothing really new here. So that's what I wanted to show you with the photos and all the adjustment that you can do. 
which is pretty cool. I like the way that they uh, separated the adjustment and they call it adjust because it's really more um, it, it's it's more representative of what it really does. Something minor but still very interesting. Uh, the way pages are named and the way you can interact with the functions and the options for every page. Before in Canva 1.0, let's call it 1.0, the older version of Canva, the information related to pages were here on the left hand side, on the left of your visuals. Now, um, the information related to pages are located above each of your pages. So you can see here, page one, page two, uh, that's all we have in this document. But if we click here, you can now rename the page, which is quite interesting. We can say, uh, this is my cover for the document. And for this, this is member description. Now this ability to rename your pages can come in very handy for different kinds of situations. Uh, first, for clarity, you can simply understand, okay, this is the page where I'm presenting this or that information. Uh, also, when you try to download your document um, by using this arrow right here, download, and you can select all pages or you can select individual pages. So this is also something new. Uh, before Canva gave you a different way of downloading pages, they didn't give you a preview like like now. Like now, you have a very like a thumbnail um, that shows you a sneak peek of your page, basically. So you don't print or you don't download the wrong page anymore. And you can choose the option to download all pages or individual pages. And now the pages carry the name that you have given them. So that's pretty neat. Uh, and that's a new feature as well. That's, it's a new way of presenting um, the pages to the user and uh, letting the user select which page they want to export. There is more coming about export later. Some of you might have noticed this publish button. Uh, be patient, we'll come to this. Still talking about pages, there's something very cool that uh, I think not many people are aware of, but this is for me a major improvement in Canva 2.0 is the total amount of pages you can create in one document. Before you were limited to 30 pages, right? And now you can go all the way up to, hang on, almost there, clicking my way through this. Phew, there we go. We made it a hundred page you can now create documents that contain 100 pages. This is great because before you were limited to 30, now you can create basically, it's really hard to create documents that are over 100 pages. So very often before I was limited, I had to, to duplicate a document and recreate or delete some slides and add some new ones. But now with the 100 pages limit, uh, this is basically all I ever need in terms of document space. So that's a great new feature. You can now use up to 100 pages in your document. Woohoo! There's a new cool option as well, or simplified option, because I think this used to exist in the previous version of Canva, but now they made it more easy to use. Uh, and I'm talking about the option to share your design with other people. So you can just simply use this share button right here. And then now you can invite people to view or edit this design. So all you have to do is you type in their email address in this box right here, and then you can choose if the people can edit or simply view the design. So that gives you some flexibility to work with, which is cool. For example, if you are selling designs, if you are selling uh, specific projects to specific customers, this is how you can present your work to them just by using the invite people to view or you can even collaborate with team members by inviting people to edit, right? And then additionally here you have the same option just by sharing a link. So you can copy the link of this specific document, use the same options and send that link through Messenger or WhatsApp or whatever uh, communication platform you prefer. Canva also has a bunch, a ton of different keyboard shortcut, new stuff. To access these shortcuts, just click on this purple circle right here at the bottom right uh, corner of your screen and go to keyboard shortcuts. Canva will then give you a full list of all the shortcuts you can use 
to speed up your workflow. So if you are an advanced Canva user, or if you plan on becoming an advanced user, or simply if you want to find a few shortcuts that will simplify your life, I suggest you take a look at these, you try them, see how they work with your keyboard, might have some slight variation depending on your keyboard. I've tried most of these, they work. Uh, one of my favorite, let me show you, one of my favorite, uh, just create a new page, uh, is to use the R shortcut to create a rectangle, very cool. Another one is the T shortcut to create a text box. So these are some of my favorite shortcuts. I like the control and slash to get the side panel collapsed. This is very useful, etc., etc. So if you want to become a Canva specialist, uh, learn about these shortcuts, start using them. It will make you save a lot of time. Okay, let's come back to the different options in terms of exporting your designs. So, uh, you would probably have noticed it by now. You have a new, brand new button here that says Publish. We will cover most of these new things in the next lecture, the one talking about the new features, because this is really what Canva is all about, like new uh, exporting and publishing features. So I'm not going to get into details in this lecture, but hang on. Uh, but what I want to show you is that the way to export your document has changed slightly. So before you just hit the download and then you would find different options. And you still have this. The download is basically represented by this arrow and line button. So you can still download your uh, visuals as before. They just added one more option. So you still have the PNG uh, option which is the first one here, good for images and photos. You have PNG with transparent background only, and this is important, guys, for you to understand, only if you use Canva for work. Um, then you have the JPEG option, PDF with standard resolution, uh, which is the recommended one, PDF with high quality, and PDF for print. So um, PDF for print is an option that a lot of users have asked Canva, can we have higher resolution? Can we have something which is uh, good enough to send to the printer? And so they uh, listened to you and they now added an extra option, which is PDF print. So this is nice. Um, it's a nice improvement, a nice way of showing that they are listening to their community and they want to improve based upon their recommendations. Another new feature is the way that they help you center and align all your elements. So I guess there is an improved AI, an improved artificial intelligence by Canva to help you really center your design. They understand and they will guide you in a more effective way to really uh, achieve the alignment you are looking for. So if you remember these purple lines and now they became pink, um, they used to help you align elements, etc., etc. So now this feature, and it, you will only realize when you start using it, it's improved, like the intelligence of the system is improved and they give you more options to align your elements on, like for example, on, on this thing here, uh, centering your elements, etc., etc. So this is nice, an improved uh, assistance to centering and aligning your elements. And finally, the last feature I want to talk about is a feature only for Canva for work users, so the paid version of uh, Canva. Um, and this feature is the ability to organize some of your designs or some of your photos into folders. So you would see this if you are a Canva for work user, you will see in this uh, left menu right here, you'll see another tab called folders. So if you go ahead and click on that, you will see a bunch of different folders right here. So what are these folders? You have two types of uh, folders, two categories of folders, the photo folders and the design folders. So first, the photo folders. Uh, by default, Canva will organize for you two different folders, purchased and logos. And these are um, two folders for organizing in the purchase one, your purchased elements. So all the elements you have purchased before from Canva. And in the second one, logos, it's uh, just giving you the ability to put the logos, I guess, that you have uploaded in your brand kit. They will appear here in, under logos. And then you have the ability to create unlimited amount of folders, which is great if you want to organize your designs. I like to keep my projects organized. 
Uh, so for example, I created different types of folders. One is gradients, where I keep all sorts of gradients that I use regularly in my designs. Another one is a folder with the photos of myself without a background that I use all the time to create all sorts of visuals and etc etc. You can create unlimited amount of folders and, and put your element in these folders. The way you put them in a folder, for example, if I wanted to add this photo right here to a specific folder, I just click on the three dots and then move to folder and then a list of all my folders would appear here and I just click on it and the photo will be stored in that specific folder. So going back to folders, the other kind of folders is the design folders. So if you look at the design folder, you now have the possibility to access very easily all the different visuals that you have created in the past with Canva. In order to show you the differences, I just switched to my free Canva account. So I'm not into Canva for work anymore. And I want to show you how the folder button looks if you are uh, using Canva as a free user. You will see like this. So you can still have a folder for your purchased element. So everything that you have purchased before in Canva will show up here. Then you will see create photo folder, but it's a feature for Canva for work. And then you will see design folder, use your designs as template, but also as a Canva for work option. So it will, you will be prompted if you want to use these options to try out for a free 30 day of Canva for work, or you simply cannot use these options. This option right here of using your design as a template is very powerful because it means you can basically import any older uh, design that you have created with Canva 2.0. It won't, won't be compatible with Canva 2.1, uh, but you can recall them and use them here. Let me show you. I'm just going to quickly switch back to my Canva for work account there. So now if I click on the folder, this is my Canva for work account. I, I switched. Uh, this is what you will see, all your designs. So these are all the designs I have created before and I can import them. Let me just find a new page. So if you hover over the designs, you can see every pages. You can see three, four, five out of five pages. And you can import whatever page you like of this design. In this case, not very relevant because they are all similar. But if I go to this document, for example, I have eight different pages. I can click here and choose which page I would like to import here. I would like to import this one. And then there you go. You can quickly import um, an element or a page of a previous design into your actual design. This is awesome. And this is for me a good reason to upgrade to Canva for work.